Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick tour of how you would use Rackspace to launch a dev server. And this is something I do a lot, and Rackspace is a really great choice because it's pretty cheap. Um, I pay less than three dollars a month per server if I have to launch any, and you know, being a web developer, I have to launch many dev sites. So let's look at how to do this. So first, create a Rackspace account, link up a credit card, do that to Jazz. Then log into your Rackspace account. Click hosting over here on the left and then click cloud servers and then click add server. Now you're going to be offered a choice of servers. I always just choose the latest Ubuntu. Uh, you can choose whatever you want, but I always choose Ubuntu because I like, I like it and it works great for me. So select Ubuntu and then I give it a server name. So I'm going to call this um, test server and then give it a RAM size. I always just give it the minimal amount just because I, you know this is just not this is just supposed to be a test you know not not something big and hit create server and then it'll it'll load up this screen and give it a minute and then send you an email with a username and password okay so here's the email I got with the username and password great so I'll then log in uh, so I'm gonna open terminal uh, terminal right here terminal and I'm gonna open term I have visor for terminal which is um, a cool add-on that lets you pop up terminal with the control key so I'll be just working over here so I'm gonna copy the IP address of the new server okay and I will say SSH root at that IP address hit enter and then you'll have to hit yes because I just already did this once you will have to hit yes first and then you'll paste in the password like that now I'm logged in to my new dev server so the first thing we need to do is install a lamp stack which is uh, on Linux, it's Apache, MySQL, PHP, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is run something called task cell, which is task select, basically. Hit enter, and that actually is going to pull up this blue menu, and it may be hard to see, but we're going to go down to lamp server and hit spacebar to select it and then enter to install it. Now we still have our password uh, copied, but I'll copy it again. And now in a second here, it's going to be done, so it says seven seconds remaining. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now it says for our MySQL root password, root user, what is our password? I'm just going to paste in the password, being the same password as our server. So hit enter, and it says repeat password for MySQL root user. So I'll paste in the password and enter again. So now I've configured MySQL, configured PHP, and configured Apache. So this is going to finish. And then uh, I'm going to actually pull up a web browser here and that IP address, this guy. As soon as this is done, we should be able to go to our IP address. And actually, Apache's done. It's onto MySQL now, so actually it should work, but I'll wait a second until this is done. All right, so this looks like it's almost done, 100%. Okay, so it's done. We're back here at the command line. Let's test out our new server by going to our IP address, and Apache says it works. So now we have an, uh, a couple of things to do. Uh, in terms of getting our server set up. So still in the command line, the next thing we want is to is install curl. Curl is something I use often. It's just something I always do when I launch a server. So apt get install curl php5 dash curl and hit enter and then yes I want to install it and that will install curl for us which is great. There's a couple of things we have to do. If we want to use mod rewrite using ht access, we actually have to enable mod rewrite. Um, the way the mod rewrite works is um, if we mod rewrite is supposed to be in our mods enabled folder. So if we go to cd slash etc slash apache two slash mods uh, enabled enabled. If we go there and list, you're not going to see. We need something in here called rewrite dot load, and as you can see, it's not in here. That means that the rewrite module is not installed by default. So we're just going to install it. So let's actually CD back home because you'll be here. We're actually going to copy from, um, actually, let's go back to where we were. We're going to go back to here. There's another folder in here. So if we CD dot dot, we're going to go back one directory and list. We've got two folders called mods enabled and mods sorry mods available and mods enabled our our module that we want is actually in mods available so if we actually cd into mods available and we list we actually can see rewrite.load right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back home 
and I'm just going to paste in a cp command that's going to copy that. Actually, I'll type it out for you. I'm going to cp for copy from something to something. So from etc slash apache2 slash mods available, right, because that's where we are now, slash rewrite.load. I'm going to copy that to slash etc slash apache2 slash mods enabled slash rewrite.load. Okay, that's going to copy rewrite.load from here to our other place and enter, and that's done. What I normally do is just paste that in so you don't have to type it every time. Okay. The next thing we have to do is actually enable HT Access. So if we were to use HT Access right now, it wouldn't work. We actually have to allow HT Access to work. So we're going to use a text editor called VI, which is fun. <laughs> but basically, we need to edit a file. We're going to edit VI, meaning open this file in, in VI's text editor. VI is the name of the text editor. Slash etc slash Apache 2 slash sites available slash default. Okay. We're going to go in here, and you see this now, you see this file here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to allow an override for our var www folders. So we're going to scroll over with our arrow keys down to we can see that allow override here. In order to edit something in VI, you just hit the I command. I for insert. So now that I'm editable, I can actually delete this none and type in all. Then I'll come down here to this one and type in all as well. Okay, so there, all, all. Now to get out of here, I'm going to hit escape. Okay, now if you're using VI, if sorry, if you're using Visor for terminal, the thing that makes this pop in and out, if you're using Visor just like me, then you actually have to turn escape off because escape will actually close this. So make sure you don't do that. So escape to get out of insert mode. And now you're going to hit colon to actually get down to be able to type commands at the bottom. And then write quit exclamation point means write quit go now don't ask me any questions and that will write, save the file quit and quit immediately and that's what you have to do to enable HT access and mod rewrite which is something you normally have to do as well okay um, the next thing you want to do is you want to install send mail so if you're going to be playing with uh, PHP email you need to install send mail so apt get install send mail and it's going to ask if we want to install it and say yes and this is actually going to take a minute but that's going to install send mail which will allow you to use PHP mail and that pretty much is the last step you can install webmin if you want which gives you a graphical interface to interact with your server but generally you don't have to these are the minimum steps required that I think that you need to launch a dev server so in a, there's I guess two more um, quick steps that we want to do while send mail is installing we want to add a we're going to check out our database and we're going to check out our SSH for it. So we're going to open up um, transmit because we need to SSH into our new server, right? So what we're going to do is go to transmit. We're going to add a new server. We're going to call this test server SFTP because we're using ever SSH. And we want our IP address. So I'm going to pull this back up. So here's this IP address. That's the server. Our username is root and this is our password. There. 22 is correct. We want a remote path to be slash var slash www. I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to show you that in a second, but that's what I'm going to put here. So save. And now I can actually go into test server, and now I've got a file system for my server, which is great. I'm currently in the root user folder. If I actually go to slash here, this is the very far root of the server. I can actually go into var www, and you see this index.html, and that's the it works file. So this is actually the web root, slash var, slash www. That is the web root that you're usually used to. On some other servers, it's called hdocs or whatever. So what I'm actually going to do is edit this. So whenever I log in, it's going to log directly into slash var www. So now when I double click this, it'll log me right into here, and I am good to go. So now I've got my file transfer open. The last thing I need is to open up a database for this. So let me quit this. I'll open SQL Pro, and I will not um, do that now. I'm going to make a new uh, server here. I'm going to make a new server called Test Server, right? 127.0.0.1 is fine. Our username, so we actually want to select SSH over here because we got to SSH in to the server and then connect to it. So Test Server is fine. Localhost is fine. Root is fine. We need to change the password, obviously. So here's our new password. Our database, we don't have a database yet, so we have to leave that blank. Um, our host is our IP address. Okay, now, now we're doing the SSH part. Root, and then of course this password, which I should have pasted before. 
There you go. And now that's done. Port will be 22, but it knows that. So you're going to hit Add to Favorites, because you want that to be over here. But now we're going to double-click it, and ta-da, here we are in our database. And so we're actually going to create a database, so we can start with, called Test. And now we've created a test map. And actually what we want to do is maybe um, maybe want to import uh, a whole database. So let's say we want to import this uh, this folder in here. I think I have this guy. So now I've actually imported data into the database, and you can see I've got user, uh, you know, blah blah blah, database information. So one thing I'm going to do though is actually preferences, uh, favorites, test server database test because I don't want to log into the no database I want to always log into the test database since that's the one I'm working with and I save that favorite so close and now next time I open SQL Pro test server database looks in the test double click it here I am right into my database that I'm working with so now I've got my dev server for an SSH I've got my SQL database set up and I've got file transfer set up here the last step that you might want to do is set up Coda for a site, but we can do that later. Here you go, you've set up a dev server online.